Hey, welcome to Midtown Comics TV. I'm Alan Kistler. This is Jose Ramos. That's a me. We got a great show. No, Reina. We got a great show for you this week. No, you and cannot treat our guest host this way. Well, she doesn't mind. She's a guest host. She doesn't have the like privileges of real hosts. But she's being really awesome and holding up the sign and letting yeah, people know that we're in Midtown. Yeah, and she's doing a great job if she's keeping in place. No, she is doing fine being herself. And hi, Reina. Welcome Hello. to the show. How you doing? Pretty good. Looking. Say hello to the internets. Yes. Hi, internet. Yes, many people are looking at you right now. Fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, but it's our show. No, she's a guest host. She's just as good as we are. Sure. No, she's not as good as we are. We're the real host, okay? Like, no, she has a, a, an opinion on books. It's fine. Your mom has an opinion on books. You know. Oh. About the situation. Oh, your mom's dead. My mother. Oh. You know. Faux pas. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Adventure Comics issue six. Pretty much, Superboy has uh, always been concerned about whether or not he takes after more Lex Luthor or Superman. And in this one, the girl that he's been crushing on, Lori, he finds out is actually related to Lex Luthor. He comes face to face with Lex Luthor and just wants him to pretty much tell him that he has something good in him. Well, if you're a fan of Lex, you really should check it out. Invincible Iron Man number 22. With the slow but sure build up into the siege, we're getting a very, very good issue into what makes Tony Stark tick. We're seeing what other heroes think of him finally. For a while, we've all we've ever seen about Tony Stark is, you know, he's this fascist from Civil War. Now we get to see why he's the hero. It works. It's great. Get it. Catwoman, Blackest Night tie-in. Uh, the title is back just for one issue for Blackest Night, but this isn't just about Black Lanterns. It isn't just about the fact that Black Mask is back from the dead, wanting revenge on Catwoman. It involves Catwoman's sister, who we haven't seen in quite some time since she went insane because Ed Brubaker had horrible, horrible things happen to her. It's also setting up things for Catwoman's future. Very creepy, scary, emotional things. Check it out. Strange Issue 3. Doctor Strange has given up his role of Sorcerer Supreme and instead has taken on a protege. In this issue, you see the horrors and just disgusting world of pageants and mothers who would go so far as to contract a demon in order for their daughters to survive. Go for it. Do it. It's a good read. Secret 6, number 17, leading in from Suicide Squad, number 67, Black Snight Tire from last week. Nod, nod, wink, wink, go get it. It's good, because it's Gail Simone and John Astronder. And no one knows how to write villains that you care about, like these two characters. I, I, I can't even say, but it's amazing. So go buy it. Now. The Marvel's Project, issue five. We're continuing the saga of how the original Marvel superheroes began in the 30s and 40s. If you've never read a comic before in your life, this is a perfect introduction to the Marvel Universe as a whole. This issue, Steve Rogers has finally gotten his powers, and we're seeing how that's going to slowly change the world. Also, when the Red Skull begins his campaign. Very cool stuff. And if you have been reading Marvel since forever, this is going to give you new insights. Trust me. Check it out. Pirate Shazam number 48. Really nice Black and I tie in. We get to see how, well, since the Black Lantern is so tied to emotions, you can see that they feel. If you read Jeff John's run on JSA, doing all this stuff with Black Adam and Osiris, this issue is phenomenal. Go check it out. Batgirl issue six. In this issue, you see how everyone's adapting, including Damien and Dick Grayson, to their new roles as Bruce Wayne has been killed. And you see a little bit about Oracle and her viewpoint on how everyone's taking the changes. If you like the Batman world and you like anything to do with that, you really should focus on this right now. Since a new issue of the Marvel's Project is out this week, I figure maybe we go back and talk about some Golden Age heroes. Let's start with the first superpowered Marvel hero. Namor, the Submariner. You know who he is. Pointy ears, wings on ankles, Atlantean, Imperious Rex, super strong, super tough. In Marvel Mystery Comics issue one, 
we got the introduction of the original Human Torch character. Now this character was actually not a human at all, he was an android, he was an artificial man in the most literal sense of the word. He had organs, he had lungs, a heart, blood, tissue, it was just all synthetic. A defect in his construction meant that he could burst into flame. He later learned how to control his flame and it went from being a Frankenstein style story to more of a superhero misunderstood by the masses for a while. He later got a sidekick in the mutant character Toro, Thomas Raymond, who could also burst into flame, and he was fairly popular. Eventually uh, his stories were cancelled and he was pretty much forgotten. When the Fantastic Four got their powers, Johnny Storm named himself the new Human Torch in reference to the original because his powers were so similar. The biggest Golden Age character of Marvel is, of course, Captain America, Steve Rogers. He was a skinny kid from Queens, he was an artist, and he really wanted to just fight for his country because he saw the war happening in Europe, he feared America was going to get involved. Finally, he took part in experimental Operation Rebirth, which gave him a super soldier formula and bombarded him with Vita rays, making him the ultimate human being. He's the perfect physical specimen, not superhuman, the peak of human efficiency. There are other Golden Age Marvel characters you might want to check out. There's the Destroyer, there's the Blazing Skull, um, the Wizard, who's great. I mean, it, it, this is guy with super no, speed who- No, no, no. Just because you're a Flash fan doesn't mean you can like every character with super speed. He's, right? a, he's a good character. He is he's not well, a good no, character. Well the rounded. Wizard he's... is not well-rounded. No, he has a horrible costume. It's all yellow with that stupid W that was made out of speed lines. No, the speed like, lines were good. It, they it didn't even look like speed lines at the time. It implied speed. It did not imply speed. A big W? Like, oh, the W is moving so fast off his chest. Oh. That's, yeah. No, that's no. exactly what it and is. And he had the worst origin next to maybe the original 3D man. No, no, his origin was not that bad. And he had a, it was bad. It, no. Uh, okay, the Flash, all the Flashes have had an amazing scientific accident happen to them. Once in a lifetime freak accident, all right? The Wizard had an emergency injection of mongoose blood and became really fast. First off, mon mongooses, mon mongoose, mon mon Is it mongoose mon or mongoose? I don't know, but they're fast and also... Yeah. Do yeah. not bring up the Flash to me like yeah. that, ever. You know what? Ever. I'm defending the Flash. I love the Flash. Wizard sucks. Horrible costume, bad name, awful origin. They try to save it later saying, no, he's a mutant and the mongoose blood just set off his powers. No, we all know the truth. Had, we all know the truth. He had a fin. No, 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 no. It, it no you it's... can't retcon that. No, no. Sucked. <clears throat> no. Sucked. Awesome. Sucked. Awesome. Sucked. Sucked. I'm so sorry, Wizard, but you sucked. I'm just saying. You suck. So, that's all we have for this week from Midtown Comics TV. Thank you, Raina, for stepping in and being our guest host. And, uh, Thank you, Raina. No problem. <laughs> Remember to watch us on Crazy Six of Geeks, the series, on com comicmix.com. You should definitely check out the podcast. You get to meet random new creators. Like, I don't know, uh, Andy Diggle? Was that? Was that Larry Hama. Larry. Other people. Mark Wade's coming up. We got even. I might be a guest one time. Check it out. You don't. You're gonna want to skip that episode. Take care. What am I doing? Magic of Shazam, number forty-eight. Power of Shazam. Power? Is it not? Uh, no, you know you're right. I will come back from the dead and make you buy this book. You have to die first. I will kill someone and make them come back from the dead and make you buy this book. <laughs> <laughs> Just go buy the book, okay. there you go.